Hello everyone, it's me Beth, the Blackberry Hag, and welcome back to another video, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining me. Today we're going to do a tag that is from Dark Willow Crafts. It is her own original tag that she created, and it's called the Recommended Witchcraft Books Tag. So let's just get into it. First question is, what was your first witchcraft book? My first witchcraft book was Sybil Leek's Diary of a Witch, which I found in my mother's bookshelf. I never asked her how it got there. Um, I don't remember a whole lot about it, except looking through the book and being like, hmm, I guess witches are real. And I don't know how old I was at the time. I want to say maybe between like 9 and 13. I found this book and I sat down and looked at it and I didn't really understand a whole lot of it. I was like, okay, witchcrafts are, witches are real. <laughs> so... <laughs> That did awaken my interest, though. And then shortly after that, within the next couple, couple of years, I got um, this book. Let's see if it's in frame. Mastering Witchcraft by Paul Husson. This is a very... Um, I can see I have a lot of underlining in this book, but I'm not sure how much of what I read I actually understood at the time. Uh, this is a very traditional witchcraft type book I guess I would say it was published in 1970 and um, some of the things on the back are powers and their attainment casting spells how to recognize a witch the witch's tools uh, curses spells for lovers initiation rituals magical defense magical recipes divination prophetic dreams summoning the dead counter magic and protection which is familiar and how to form a coven so I, I um, I did do a couple of spells from this book, and I think I made a couple of, it has some herbal formulas in here. I did a couple of these things, but um, yeah, this was one of my first ones. I'm trying to figure out where to put the books. I've got a whole stack of books because I don't have all of the books I'm going to talk about in my physical possession, but the ones that I do, I wanted to hold up and show. Another of my early books was The Crone's Book of Words by Valerie Worth. In these days, like, I was living in Philadelphia at the time, and there were still some um, occult shops you could go into. There probably still are now, but where I live, there aren't. Where I live now, in uh, small town Massachusetts, there are not. And this is a very interesting book. It's written in poetry, and it, it has... Um, I did do I, at least one thing from here, and I did not like the results. And that was where I learned that I was actually quite scared by the results. And um, this is where this book taught me to be careful of the magic that you do, because it might actually work. Let's see. The next question. What is your favorite witchcraft book? I would have to say my favorite is um, it's the Penzac series, Christopher Penzac's Temple of Witchcraft series, even though I have not yet worked my way through all of them, but I really love his teaching style, and um, I am revisiting them right now to uh, fill in some gaps and brush up on some things that I may have missed. What are your top three recommended books for beginners? Again, I would say Penzac's Temple series, although it does start with beginner with the inner temple of witchcraft and it really gets quite advanced by the time you get to the living temple of witchcraft, which I have not read yet. Um, and then let's see, um, The Witch at the Forest's Edge, I don't remember the author's name, but I'll put it in um, the description box below because I'm going to name all the books I've talked about. Um, it is a very good beginner's book, but it's not just for beginners. It would be especially useful if you're interested in traditional witchcraft. But it doesn't go into a lot of the religious aspect of that, just the more um, being in a tune with nature, having an animistic worldview, working with the land around you, beginning witch flight, those kinds of things are covered in that book. Um, what, and then the other ones, I forget, I'm supposed to do three, so the other ones that I'm going to say for that would be Silver Raven Wolf, and I just have a sentimental 
attachment to her because her books were also among my first books a little later on. And um, I think that there is some sound. She comes under criticism a lot these days for being fluffy, but I think that there is a lot of sound material in her books, a lot of sound teachings. Let's see, what is your top intermediate advanced book? I'm going to say this one, Elemental Witchcraft by um, Heron Michelle. Um, there's a lot I don't agree with in it, and I'm still working my way through it, and that's probably going to be for a while now. And I'm not going to be, when I say working my way through it, I don't have the funds to purchase all the ingredients that she includes in there. And um, I'm not even interested in doing all the rituals that she's including in there. But I do find a lot of her thoughts, her deeper thoughts on the elements and the Wheel of the Year to be very inspiring and um, give me a good jumping off place for thinking of my own things that I might want to do. So that would be that book, though I think you could take it as deep as you wanted to. It could be intermediate, it could be advanced, depending on how much you want to how much work you want to put into it. What upcoming witchy books are you looking forward to the most? Well, I am looking forward to, and I am looking on here because otherwise I might forget, um, Broke Witch by Deborah Castellano and um, Hades by Jamie Wagoner. And the reason for the second one is that Poseidon is my patron god and the Hades is one of his brothers. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. And I think both of those come out in 2024. What is your go-to book for spells? I don't really use a lot of spells written by other people, but I do. I'm talking while not even looking at you and I apologize for that because I have a chair with books here. So I'm trying to grab books. Um, I don't use a lot of spells written by other people, but I do consult a lot of um, folklore and conjure and hoodoo and those kinds of things. So I would say that my go-to for ideas for spells would be New World Witchery by Corey Thomas Hutchison. And let's see, what is your go-to for crystals? These are going to fall any minute. The Book of Stones by Robert Simmons and Naisha Aasian. This is a gorgeous book. It is very in-depth and very extensive, and it has a lot of photographs, but it's not huge. It takes up your whole page photographs there. Um, there is a lot of text here, too, and it goes into... So this book goes into a lot of detail about the different crystals. It names a lot of crystals. Um, and uh, it has different perspectives from the two authors who come at things from slightly different directions. It's got keywords, it has the element, it has what chakras you can use that crystal with, and it has um, what you could use the stone for on a spiritual, emotional, phys and physical level, as well as an affirmation and uh, very lengthy entries. So this book is definitely my go-to. Uh, for anything having to do with crystals. Let me see if I cannot dump more books on the floor. And I think, I think the next one is, what is your go-to book for herbs? And that book, as far as what I have in my collection right now, is A Compendium of Herbal Magic by Paul Byerl, Byerly. And it has some illustrations of the plants. I don't know if you can see that at all. It has um, examples of how the plant appeared in the lore of various cultures. It has some uh, quotations from other older herbals, the usage, and um, planets that it's associated with, all kinds of things. It's a really, really useful book. And it also has a really large index that has that broken down by, it has a, um, a really thorough index and it also has the herbs broken down by planet in the back, in the appendix of the book. So thoroughly recommended. 
let's see. Uh, what is your go-to book for tarot? I don't really have one. Um, I tend to read, I do tend to read the guidebooks when I get a new deck and I, um, because sometimes the decks are slightly different systems depending on what the deck is. So it's not all straight Rider Waite Smith. You, you sometimes do need to have to read the guidebook to get to know that particular deck, that particular system. Um, so I don't have one per se, but I would for beginners recommend Kitchen Table Tarot by Melissa Sanova. That was a very, uh, it's, it's very concise, it's very helpful. It talks to you like you're sitting at a friend, uh, at the kitchen table with a friend talking about the cards. Uh, what, what is your recommended book for your style of witchcraft? Um, I have been in the Northern tradition more or less for 20 years now, and I'm just starting to work with the Greek gods now. So I don't have um, a particular style as far as a particular, um, I'm, I'm eclectic, I guess, is how you could describe it now. But my style is more like, um, aimed towards spirit work than, um, than I guess, Wicca-esque. The books that I would recommend for my style of witchcraft, as of right now, would be Consorting with Spirits by Jason Miller, and um, Modern Witchcraft with the Greek Gods by Jason Mankey, and probably also... Um, so the authors, my favorite authors, I would have to say Jason Miller, uh, Christopher Penzak, Silver Ravenwolf. A lot of the, in her case, I think her work is sound, but I came upon it so early and that was, that really formed part of my foundation and I have a sentimental feeling about her work. And then also Corey Thomas Hutchison. And then what are you currently reading? I am reading, I am reading the Elemental Witchcraft book that I showed earlier. Also reading Magpie Training, The Black Feather Mystery School by Irene Glass and Kane Dreamwalker. And this is another good beginner's book, but I am finding that I, I'm wanting to adapt a lot of the things in here for my own uh, practice. So it's taking me a while to get through it for that reason. And I'm also reading Isis Magic, Cultivating a Relationship with the Goddess of 10,000 Names by M. Isadora Forrest. And this is a really big book, almost 600 pages. I am here, here in this book. A lot of this book is stuff that I won't be reading all the way through. It is much more ritualistic than I ever want to be in my own practice, but it does offer a lot of inspiration and ideas. So a lot of times that is what I will get from a book. I won't follow the whole book. I won't even try to, but I will um, read. Oh, this is all introductory and historical stuff about Isis at the beginning, and then it will go into specific rituals and... Um, it's much more, again, much more ritualistic than I would be interested in being, but there's still a lot of important information to be gleaned from it. You can pick up things to modify is based a lot of times what I'm looking for. And then I guess that's it for right now that I'm reading. Uh, my top three books of all time, I would have to say Penzac's Temple series. Um, Real Sorcery by Jason Miller. It used to be called um, Strategic Sorcery, I think, and they've re recently released it with a new name, and New World Witchery by Corey Thomas Hutchison. So, that was a lot. <laughs> I'm going to leave uh, the, a list of all the books that I talked about in the description box below, and I will also leave a list of the questions in case you would like to do this tag yourself. Again, the tag was created by Night Willow Crafts. And that's it for this video. I will talk to you again soon. Blessed be.